Today, we're talking about UVB. We're gonna be going over what UVB is, why chameleons need UVB, what bulbs you should be using, how much they cost, how often to replace them, and everything in between. So, let's get into it. The first thing we should cover is what is UVB. UVB stands for ultraviolet B, which is one of three types of light that are produced by the sun. There's also ultraviolet A and ultraviolet C. Reptiles, and chameleons in particular, need UVB in order to synthesize vitamin D3 in order to properly absorb the calcium in their diet. So UVB and supplements work in a harmonious relationship. Without UVB, your chameleon will develop metabolic bone disease, commonly referred to as MBD, deformations, and ultimately death. I know that's kind of scary, but that's the truth. Proper UVB is an essential part of chameleon husbandry. The biggest mistake I see chameleon keepers make is that they have the incorrect UVB. If your UVB looks like this or like this, you have the wrong UVB. What you have is called a compact UVB, which is gonna be that squiggly bulb that you can buy in the chameleon kit or comes with the, the dual fixture. I know there's a picture of a chameleon and maybe the pet store employee told you that's what chameleons need, but it's incorrect. The compact UVB doesn't penetrate more than maybe two or three inches. And I did a whole video that compares different types of UVB bulbs and measures the UVI output of these different bulbs. So you can see for yourself, I'll link that up above here and in the description box below. The kind of UVB bulb that I'm going to recommend is called a T5HO linear UVB bulb. The HO stands for high output, and this is gonna be the long skinny bulb that you see in Neptune's enclosure, and the linear UVB penetrates much further into the enclosure as seen by that video where I measured all the different UVI. So if your chameleon is chilling here, on a branch and you have the compact UVB and it's only penetrating this far into the enclosure, your chameleon is unable to properly absorb that UVB versus if you had the linear UVB and then it can penetrate much deeper and actually hit the chameleon so the chameleon can absorb that UVB and then do all the D3 synthesis, calcium, you know, sciencey stuff. Okay, now that we've determined that we're gonna toss our compact UVB bulb and get a new T5 linear UVB bulb, which is great, we have to decide what brand and what strength of UVB we need for our particular enclosure and chameleon. There's a bunch of different factors that go into it, and I'll try my best to give you some recommendations, but continue to do research and keep in mind what works for one keeper and one type of chameleon may not work for a different keeper. As of today, there are two brands of T5 UVB bulbs that are commonly used in the chameleon hobby. That's going to be Reptisun and Arcadia. I personally use Arcadia bulbs, but tons of keepers use Reptisun. I think Reptisun are a lot easier to get your hands on than the Arcadia bulbs. Something to keep in mind is that T5 UVB bulbs are very difficult to get your hands on at say like Petco and PetSmart. So check online, um, Amazon is a great resource. Um, there's Light Your Reptiles, just look online. There's tons of carriers, Josh's Frogs, Pangea. I know all those guys carry T5. Bulb. So it's up to you which one you want to use. I think they're pretty similar, um, so just your choice. Now the strength of UVB that you use, that's going to matter and that's going to make a difference. So as you can see, these are both T5 UVB bulbs from Arcadia, but one says 6% and one says 12%. So you're like, hmm, how do I decide which one to use? And so that's where my recommendations come into place. The numbers on the bulbs correspond to the percentage of light that is UVB, either 6% or 12%, 5.0 or 10.0. But a 6% Arcadia and a 5.0 Reptisun are going to be in the same family and put out the same amount of UVB. A 10.0 Reptisun and a 12% Arcadia are gonna put out the same UVB are in the same family. One is a higher level of UVB and one is a lower level of UVB. And we have to be careful that we correctly choose the right number or percentage of UVB. Because if we give our chameleon too little UVB, we might as well be using a compact UVB. They're not gonna be able to do the absorption and synthesis and have nice, strong, healthy bones from that calcium. And if we give them too much 
UVB than just like, so like humans, right? If we get too much sun, we get sunburnt. I mean, I certainly do being a redhead, um, but chameleons will get internal organ damage. That is long term. And so they may not show any visible side effects of UVB, but the damage is most certainly happening. So we can't just blast them with UVB and we can't give them too little UVB. We have to find that harmonious balance in relationship with UVB. One thing that we should touch on is a solar meter, which is this guy here. I did a whole video on measuring different types of UVB with a solar meter. And what a solar meter does is it measures the UV index of your UVB bulbs. So that tells me how much of like sun power is the UV bulb putting off. So this can tell me that I have safe levels for my chameleon and when I need to replace my bulbs because it tells me when it stops putting off UVB, which we'll get into that, don't worry. But the gist of it is this is a very, very powerful tool. It can tell me exactly how far away I need to put my basking branch. It can tell me exactly what kind of UVB I need to use and when to replace them. I got mine off of Amazon for about $250. This is the Solar Meter 6.5. I highly, highly, highly recommend you pick one up. A lot of keepers don't. And as a result, they kind of have to guess with their UVB and use their best judgment, which can be pretty intimidating as a new keeper. So I know it's a big price tag, but getting a solar meter is 100% worth it. If you don't have a solar meter, then I'd probably recommend the 5.0 Reptisen or the 6% Arcadia UVB because you don't wanna to have too much UVB. And if your branch is too close and you don't know that you could be exposing your chameleon to too much UVB. So if you don't have a solar meter, it might be wise to get the 5.0 Reptisen or 6% Arcadia. Another reason would be if your basking branch is close to the top of the screen, then your chameleon is going to have that closer exposure to UVB. And also if your enclosure is just lightly planted, maybe you have one or two plants in there, maybe a, a vine or two, but it's, it's lightly planted. It's not packed full of plants, then that's going to give your chameleon more UVB exposure because they're not going to have as many places to hide to get out of that UVB. So under those circumstances, I would recommend a 5.0 Reptisen or 6% Arcadia. I would recommend the 10.0 Reptisen or the 12% Arcadia if you have a solar meter because you can ensure exactly how far away your basking branch needs to be without overexposing your chameleon. Or if you have a basking branch that is further away, then you can consider a 10.0 or 12%. Or if you have an enclosure that is densely packed with a lot of plants, then it might be an option for you because then your chameleon will be able to get out of that strong UVB. But if you want to play it safer than the 5.06%, if you're an experienced chameleon keeper and you understand the concept of UVB to a higher extent, then you could consider the 10.0 or 12%. So now that we know the type of UVB, the brand of UVB, the strength of UVB, we now need to talk about the size of UVB. So linear UVBs come in a variety of sizes. This is a 22 inch. This one is a 34 inch. So a bunch of different sizes. The rule of thumb is you want your UVB to go across the entire enclosure. So if your enclosure is 24 inches wide, then you are gonna want a fixture that is 24 inches long. I have a 36 inch fixture with a 34 inch bulb inside a 24 inch long enclosure. And you can see it's placed diagonally. So this will fit diagonally or you could turn it, you know, parallel and then you could get a 24 inch. But at the minimum, you want one that runs parallel with the enclosure. Something to keep in mind is that the ends of the UVB do not put out nearly as much UVB as the rest of the bulb. So if you got a 12 inch bulb, you're gonna go, well, it's at least half of it, but even like half of that bulb isn't actually putting out the proper amount of UVB. So what you really want is a UVB that is as long as your enclosure. So now we have the type of bulb, the brand of bulb, the strength of bulb, the size of the bulb. And last but not least, we need a fixture, something to put the bulb in, because that long skinny bulb is not going to fit in that dome fixture that you have. So what you want is something that looks like this. Okay, 
It's long, skinny, you know, I've got the, the cord on the end, and this is a reflector, T5HO fixture. There's a couple different brands that you can get, but as long as it looks something along these lines, then I think you're okay. What's awesome about the reflector hood is that it helps put out more of that UVB. So this is what I would recommend for your chameleon. So a fixture is going to be slightly bigger than the bulb size. So if you're getting a 22 inch bulb, then you're gonna need a 24 inch fixture. If you're getting a 34 inch bulb, then you're gonna need a 36 inch, 36 inch fixture. And if you end up getting a 48 inch fixture, then you can put a 46 inch bulb in there. So it's about a two inch difference between the two. You might be asking yourself how much the fixture and the bulb cost. It depends on the brand and most importantly, the size that you get. The fixture will typically run you around $55 and the bulb will typically run you around $30. And that's just me perusing on Amazon. Be sure to shop the sales use discounts, whatever the case may be, but that's generally the ballpark of how much you can expect to spend. Where you put your UVB in your enclosure is important. You definitely want it on the outside of the closure, but where you put it diagonally, linearly, you know, how far forward, how far backward is going to depend how your enclosure is built out. The most important thing is you want a gradient. So you want spots that are higher, spots that are lower that your chameleon can get to so they can choose to have more UVB exposure or lower UVB exposure. Also keep in mind what kind of coverage you're providing. So you want to allow for spots for your chameleon to hide under the UVB. So keep in mind that it's all about a gradient between the heat and the UVB and you know, all that plays into it. So strategically place it so that you have that gradient and you have spots that are higher and lower for your chameleon. Another popular question that I get asked is how long should your UVB bulb be on? The correct answer is on for 12 hours and off for 12 hours. This should be the same time as your heat bulb. This is because we want to create a day and night cycle for our chameleons. An easy recommendation that I always give people is to use an outlet timer that you can plug your lights into so then they'll turn on and off automatically and you don't have to worry about it. You can just pick this up at places like Target or Walmart or Amazon. They, they don't have to be reptile specific outlet timers. You can pick one up for like, I think like three or four dollars. They're a great investment. A common misconception and a common mistake is thinking that just because a UVB bulb turns on, that's producing enough UVB. What ends up happening is over time, the amount of UVB that is put off by the bulb decreases. And so just because it turns on doesn't mean it's giving your chameleon enough UVB. So as a result, we have to replace your bulbs. This is another benefit of getting a solar meter is I can tell exactly when my bulbs need replacing so I can see when the levels start to drop and get too low for my species of chameleon. So if you don't have one of those, then you're just going to have to go off of my recommendations. As of today, the rule of thumb is a Repti Sun bulb gets replaced every six months and an Arcadia bulb gets replaced every 12 months. So keep in mind, just because it turns on does not mean it's giving enough UVB. Another misconception is someone will think, oh, the sun gives off UVB. If I just put my chameleon's enclosure by the window, then it'll get UVB and I don't need a UVB bulb. This is incorrect. Windows that are used today for houses and apartments and homes and whatnot cancel out the UVB. So if you put your chameleon by the window, it's not actually getting any UVB, it cancels it out. You'd have to put your chameleon directly outside to expose it to UVB. And that's a whole nother video topic, that's a whole nother discussion, but I just wanted to nix the idea of people just trying to put their enclosures by windows and thinking that's sufficient, because it's not. I know UVB is a complicated topic and hopefully this video serves as a good starting point, but please continue to do your research and understand that what works for one keeper may not work for another keeper and there's a lot of factors that go into deciding which UVB bulb you should get. Feel free to leave me any questions or comments down below and I'll do my very best to answer them. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe so you know when I post a new video. You can follow Neptune and all my chameleons on Instagram at Neptune the Chameleon. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye. Okay, so I just noticed <laughs> Paul is just chilling. <laughs> How cute is that? Just chilling. He wants to come out. We've got Neptune chilling. <laughs>